Praise the Lord. Amen. Welcome. Welcome back to Camp Hope AME Church. Amen. Located at 114 Camp Hope Church Road, Macon, Georgia, 31211. We're at another Wednesday. Praise God. All the, the, the meetings are over, the planning meeting, the uh, annual conference. Everything is over now. We are back in service. God has allowed me, Reverend Dr. Michael L. Martin, to continue pastoring here at Camp Hope Aiden Church, and we are delighted, amen, to come every Wednesday as usual to study to show ourselves approval, work meaning not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We will continue our study, amen, in November, in, excuse me, Numbers, Numbers chapter 34, Numbers chapter 34. So we'll ask that you will get your Bibles out as we uh, start uh, our lesson today. But before that, let's go into prayer. God, we just thank you. We praise you, glorify you for your truly word to be praised. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to come to study, to show ourselves approval, where we need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And God, also, we ask that you would be with us in us, allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us on our study. Bless all of those that are out there with us, let us be empowered. Let us become witnesses. Let our lights be bright. That people that know that you are their God and you are there with them, you'll never leave them nor forsake them. And Lord, allow us to learn this history and learn the meaning and learn what you are telling us through your word. We pray this in your son Jesus' name, Lord. And if I've done anything in, in thought, word, and deed that would hinder you from coming, allowing the Holy Spirit to move. We ask that you would cover me in the sacrifice, forgive me uh, of those sins, Lord, and let us all come and break bread together. We pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen, amen, thank God. Again, Numbers chapter 34, Numbers chapter 34. And what I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read verses one through 18. I'm not going to go and butcher all the names of the sons and where they're from, amen, but we will discuss the significance of that within the scripture. Numbers chapter 34, the Lord said to Moses, command the Israelites and say to them, when you enter Canaan, the land that will be allotted to you as an inheritance is to have these borders. Your southern side will include some of the deserts of Zin along the border of Eden. Your southern border will start in the east from the south end of the Dead Sea. Cross south of the Scorpion Path, continue on to Zin and go south of Kadash Barney. Then it will go to Hazar, Adar, and over Asmund, Asmund where it will turn, join the Wadi of uh, Egypt and end at the Mediterranean Sea. Your western border will be the coast of the Meridian Sea. This will be your border on the west. For your northern border, run a line from the Meridian Sea to Mount Hor and from Mount Hor to Le Lebo, Lebo uh, Hamath. Then the border will go to Zedad, continue to Zephron, and end at Hazar, Ena. This will be your border on the north. For your eastern border, run a line from Hazar, Ena, to Zephan, Shepham, forgive me. The border will go down from Shepham to Ribla on the east side of Ayan and continue along the slope east of the Sea of Galilee. Then the border will go down along the Jordan and end at the Dead Sea. This will be your land with its borders on every side. Moses commanded the Israelites, assign this land by lot as an inheritance. The Lord has ordered that it will be given to the nine and a half tribes because the family of the tribes of Reuben and the tribes of Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance. These two and a half tribes have received their inheritance east of the Jordan across from Jericho towards the sunrise. 
the Lord said to Moses, these are the names of the men who are to assign the land for you as an inheritance. Elazar the priest and Joshua son of Nun, and appoint one leader from each tribe to help assign the land. And of course, verses 19 through 20, I believe uh, eight names, all of the names from the various tribes that will uh, be the ones that will go forth, amen, as God commanded, amen, to um, be assigned as, as a leader uh, of that particular land God has put out. And of course, 29 says that these are the men uh, the Lord commanded to sign the inheritance of uh, to the Israelites in the land of Canaan. All right, let's get right to our study. Amen. Of course, it, it begins, 34 tells us that it is uh, the borders of the land. God is now about to assign everything because uh, what is about to happen, um, Israelites, of course, about to enter the promised land. Uh, this chapter presents a, a trust deed, I would say, uh, a legal document from God to his people, if we wanted to put it in simple terms. Of course, uh, one through two, um, this is where God commands the children of Israel, tells Moses, hey, go tell the children of Israel and get them assembled and, and, and let them know these are going to be their inheritance. 34 describes to Moses and the children of Israel the borders, of course, of the land of Canaan. Uh, though the land on the east side of the Jordan River belonged to Israel, those lands were not considered to be Canaan. All right? And God has told them, now this land is an inheritance for you. Israel had to take control of the land uh, by, by, by conquest. They would have to drive out the inheritance to possess it. Yet they should never, they should never believe that the land was given to them because they earned it. Uh, it was given to them by God as an inheritance. Yes, we play a part in whatever God is going to do and give us, but however, the ultimate uh, uh, glory, the ultimate uh, person, excuse me, uh, God that has given us the particular land is God, God's self, not one of us, not those that are in it. So we need to realize if God has given to us, we are the instruments or other instruments that God uses in order to keep God's promise unto us. Uh, there was three reasons why God detailed the boundaries of Canaan uh, for Israel. Uh, first, to direct and bound them in their war uh, and wars and conquests. Uh, that they might not seek to enlarge um, their empire after the manner of the other nations, but be content with their portion that God has dedicated to them, that God has given unto them. Uh, the second uh, uh, reason is to encourage them in their attempt upon Canaan and assure them of their success, because it is Canaan that they, God has given them the land over, giving them his promise uh, of the possession, not any other land. And of course, three, to guide them in the approaching uh, distribution of the land, as we will be discussing here in just one moment. It is God, though, not Moses, not any of the leaders, not the priest. It is God that assigns us our Orders and, and cuts us out our several conditions, appointing the boundaries of our inheritance in our land, not just Israel, because we are the children of God as well. And I believe in the New Testament, we can find that scripture in uh, Acts, I believe, chapter 17, verse 26. Check it out. All right. Verses three to four, of course, talks about, uh, begins the breakdown of the various borders. Three through five talks about the southern borders of the uh, land of Canaan. The southern borders pass just south of the famous Scorpion Pass, which is a winding road from Nahal Zin based into the 
Mejad, south of uh, the Nepal. And it continues to uh, be known by that name through the Roman period and is so even unto do, uh, today. Right? The, of course, when it talks about the river of Israel, excuse me, of Egypt, uh, that is the eastern branch of the river Nile, um, which is south of the land of the Philistines. All right? Then it goes from there, from the southern border, of course, to the western border of uh, the land of Canaan, the uh, uh, Mediterranean Sea. As for the western border, you, you should have, God told them, the great sea for a border. This shall be your western border. Verses 7 through 9, of course, it talks about the uh, northern border of the land of Canaan. Uh, these landmarks fall well north of the northern border of the modern Israel, north of the ancient city of Tyre, uh, uh, Sidon, and Byblos, B-Y-B-L-O-S. Uh, verses 10 through 12 talks about the eastern border of the land of Canaan. Uh, the eastern border starts southwest from the east point of the north border, Hazar, Ena. It uh, then extends southward on an uncertain line until reaching um, what we know as the Sea of Galilee and the Jordan and the Salt Sea after that. The eastern border is, uh, is until it reaches the eastern slope again, as I said, uh, of the Sea of Galilee. All right, verses uh, 13 to 15 talks about the land, uh, the nine and a half uh, tribes settling on the western side of the Jordan River and uh, who it will be divided by and who will, of course, uh, uh, be over that particular land as we finish out the chapter here. So the land which you shall inherit, God tells them, this was the land God promised to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and the children of, 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 of Jacob, of course. It was to be divided by Lot, guided by God's uh, providential hand, according to the general principles that the larger tribes receive, of course, uh, a larger inheritance. Uh, such was the land, and such were the advantages that this that uh, this most favored people were called to possess. They were called to possess it by lot, that each might be satisfied with their portion. In other words, if it had a larger tribe, it had to have, of course, a larger set of land. Smaller tribe, smaller uh, set of land, but they would be able to manage it. Amen. They would be able to handle it, and, and they were to be content in the land which God had given them. And then, of course, God said the rest of the tribes, the, the two tribes that they have tribe, they've received their inheritance already. Remember, they came to Moses and asked, would they stay on that side? And Moses, of course, had a problem with that, but God told them, no, 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 let them do so. And so they made a deal and said, look, we will go and uh, into war and help help uh, the rest of the tribes get their land. We won't return to our land until uh, uh, um, uh, our brethren have received their land. We will leave our cattle, our wives, and our children here until that particular time. So this land uh, divided by the description in this chapter was for the nine and a half tribes west uh, of the Jordan River. Of course, the other two and a half east of the Jordan River had already received uh, their inheritance, as we uh, have read in Numbers chapter 32. Amen. Um, of course, God said these uh, are the names of the men who shall divide the land among you as an inheritance. And of course, it was Eleazar the priest and uh, Joshua, son of Nun. Uh, the division of the land of Canaan, in fact, a potential, uh, it, it was in fact a potentially divisive and even explosive uh, uh, issue among the people of Israel. So it was right for God to take the two most godly 
and prominent leaders of the nation to direct this essential and controversial duty of dividing the land. Of course, 18 through 29 talks about um, the leaders from each of the 12 tribes appointed to help uh, Joshua and uh, Eleazar divide the land. And as you read it, you will see them by name. And it told them, you shall take one leader from every tribe. Uh, as expected, this list included only 10 uh, tribal leaders because the other two, Reuben and Gad, received their inheritance on the east side of the river Jordan. Uh, the tribes are listed in rough order of the settlement, beginning with Judah and Simeon in the south and ending with Ashar, and Nephtali in the north. Uh, the description of the uh, definite land with uh, definite borders to be divided under the leadership uh, of uh, uh, definite men, emphasizing the real nature of God's promise. There is a spiritual aspect of these promises and this inheritance, but for ancient Egypt on the plains of Moab, these were plain and literal promises. Right? Amen. Well, that is chapter um, Numbers, chapter 34. Amen. We ask that you would reread over it, amen, and see how uh, God had divided the promised land unto the children of Israel specifically. God has specific instructions. God gives us specific instructions uh, to each of us on what we need to do. We need to follow God's will and God's way because God is all knowing. God knows what we need, what we can handle. Amen. And remember, even though God uses us and others to receive what God has promised, those people nor us get the glory. We must always give the glory unto God. Well, it's been a pleasure to uh, come and study on this Wednesday with you. As uh, our slogan, as we say, our motto says, come grow with us as we transform our thoughts, our words, and our deeds as we prepare for Christ's return. Know that we love you. We love Christ. We thank you, all of our covenant members, all of our virtual members, all of our friends who have supported us. We cannot do this without you. We thank you for your donations. We thank you for your prayers. We thank you for your letters. Amen. Amen. Remember, you can always reach us. Amen. If you need to, at 114 Camp Oak Church Road, Macon, Georgia, 31211. Amen. If you have any giving, if you don't want to send it by mail, of course, uh, you can do it by Givelify. Amen. Unto us. And believe me, we want you to specify specify where you want uh, your donations, your support to go, and we will, not might, we will use it for that and that purpose only. Again, we love you with the love of Christ. And as I have been saying at the end of uh, most of our, our, our programs, I will say this to you again. See you next time. God bless you.